Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to your favorite sports talk radio station, 97.3. I am your host, Matt Perka, and today we'll be discussing last night's game. And wait, we already got a call. This is Ryan from Buffalo, New York. Ryan, what are your thoughts about the play last night? Uh, I'm just going to go out and say it. Uh, Stephen Daldry captured all of Cunningham's ideas and perceptions in his film remake of The Hours. It is clearly highlighted in the car scene. Uh, does that have anything to do with that? In the car scene, Laura has returned from the city to pick up Richie from Mrs. Latch's house. In the movie, Laura tells Mrs. Latch that she was off to get a haircut, which was not mentioned in the book. This detail may be insignificant, but it highlights the fact that Cunningham and Daldry's methods of achieving their vision slightly differ, but the overall vision is the same. Daldry did a fantastic job at revealing to the audience the inner conflict between Richie and Laura. Richie has been left at Mrs. Latch's while Laura drives into the city where she nearly commits suicide. Uh, Ryan, uh, can we get back to the game? Daldry brilliantly juxtaposes two contrasting frames, one of Laura Brown and one of Richie. Laura is pictured driving away, her face contorted with thought and with a dramatic, crescendoing orchestra playing in the backdrop. Meanwhile, Richie is pictured building a little house out of Lincoln Logs. This is the conflict. Richie simply wants his mother's love and affection, and to live a happy life in a caring home, which is represented by his little building. Contrastly, Laura driving away is symbolic of how she despises the life she leads, and how she desperately wishes to free herself from her suburban prison. The game, sir. Cunningham writes, quote, For now, right now, she could be anyone, going anywhere. She has a full tank of gas, money in her wallet. For an hour or two, she can go wherever she likes, unquote. Cunningham was trying to portray how Laura felt that she needed to get away from her, her normal life, and Daldry was able to establish the same vision. However, Richie building himself a home with the logs was an invention of Daldry. This wasn't mentioned by Cunningham. This shows that Daldry and Cunningham may have shared the same vision, but in this instance, Daldry was able to utilize film techniques to perfect the ex- execution of said vision. Oh yeah, crazy game. Insane catch. Well, I think that's enough. For today, sir. Sorry about that tangent, folks. We're getting a call in from all the way from Miami, Florida. Mr. Tyler, what are your thoughts on Giancarlo Stanton? Has he reached his ceiling down there? Hey, Matt. Hope all is well up there. I have to continue on Ryan's point from the last call. There is a perpetual separation between Richie and his mother. Laura Brown uses a day off and a babysitter to isolate herself from the real world. She finds a deep pleasure in her novels and books because she can escape the world around her. But when she is placed in a car with her son, she is forced to fill that motherly figure. Well, looks like this isn't a sports talk radio channel anymore. Cunningham gives the conversation between Richie and Mrs. Brown an insincere tone of voice. In an attempt to fulfill the role as a mother to Richie, Laura says that she loves him, but however, there is a, quote, nervousness lodged in her throat. The nervousness she feels when she utters the words that she said a thousand times emphasizes the disconnect with her son. The words, I love you, are a standard saying for motherly figures to console their children, and Laura Brown uses it to make up for leaving her son. Well, I see where you're heading. Likewise, Daldry perpetuates the same insincere tone throughout the car ride scene. By using visual enhancement, which is absent in the novel, the audience is able to see an uncomfortable facial expression shown by Mrs. Brown. While driving, she is constantly panning between her son and the road, as if she's looking for something to talk about, to break this awkward silence. She is forcing herself to try to be a motherly figure to Richie, but she has no desired interest. Laura's passion for her novels takes priority over her son, and due to the set social expectations to be motherly, she tries to take care of him. All in all, I see what you're saying, and I get that the car scene is very impactful, but why such a huge focus on the hours all of a sudden? Uh, well, looks like Tyler's done talking. Well, does anyone else have anything to add with the whole movie and novel comparison in the car scene? Joey from Detroit, Michigan. Hey, Matt. Love the show. I just want to add some more insight to the hours conversation. Absolutely. Go right ahead. Cunningham describes Richard's apartment as, quote, full of light, Cunningham, 195, when Clarissa walks in, similar to Daldry's illustration in the movie. This light represents the motherly influence that Clarissa has on him, as she had attempted to get him to open up the curtains earlier and let the light in during their first scene together. So... Richard finally opening up on his own is similar to a child finally adhering to their parents' words of advice. Therefore, the calmness of Richard, in spite of what is to come, clearly resembles the calmness and confidence of a child or teenager entering adulthood 
and breaking free from the protection of their motherly figure. Okay, so what you're aiming to analyze is the whole maternal role of Clarissa, and how both Cunningham and Daldry display the same, you know, uh, picture in both the novel and film. Absolutely, Matt. Cunningham also coincides with Clarissa's character to support his own expectation of how a mother should react to this inevitable, inevitable growth. Clarissa is, quote, surprisingly calm. She can feel herself acting well in a difficult situation, end quote. Cunningham, 197. So, for the betterment of the mother and the child, Cunningham believes that a proper mother figure should at some point relinquish control and allow the child to take charge of themselves. I completely follow, Joey. Thanks for the call in. Let's wrap up the show with our last call from Wiley in San Francisco, California. Wiley, add some fuel to this fire we are discussing today. Thanks for having me on the show, Matt. Ready for this? Daldry exceptionally captures the fear and stress in Clarissa when she goes into Richard's apartment the second time. When Clarissa first walks in, she observes that, quote, the apartment is full of light, Cunningham 195. The flooding of light represents the happiness that a motherly figure such as Clarissa brings to Richard's life. It also portrays the whole idea of heaven and the fate that Richard would soon be faced with. Wow, I have never looked at that part of the movie with that connotation. What else do you think? Looks like you got some rereading to do, Matt. That I do, Wiley, that I do. Do you have anything else to add? One more thing, Matt. Clarissa immediately notices that something is wrong and proceeds to attempt to talk Richard out of whatever he is planning, just like a mother would. Daldry portrays Richard perched in the open window of his apartment in a fetal position with Clar Clarissa there trying to get Richard to listen to her, like a mother of a maturing child that still needs to be guided through life. Richard says, quote, I've stayed alive for you, but now you have to let me go, then slowly leans over the ledge and plummets towards the ground. The midst of his freefall represents adolescence, where Clarissa has little control over what happens to Richard now, such as a mother having minimal control over her teen's life. When Richard comes to his final resting place, he is freeing Clarissa of any burden that he may have on her. Richard's death represents adulthood, when a mother must let go of her child and let them go off on their own. Excellent interpretation there, Wiley. It is truly incredible how everyone has a different perception on each scene we dissected today. Thank you all for tuning in to 93.7. Have a great evening and a good night.